वेलकम गाइस होप यू आर ऑल ओके यू आर ऑल एंजॉइंग योर लाइफ एंड वेलकम अगेन विद डॉक्टर अर्शद नदीम अवान इन इट्स अल्ट्रासाउंड टीचिंग वीडियोस टुडे माय टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज पोस्ट सीजेरियन सेक्शन अल्ट्रासाउंड चेंजेस दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक मेनी अ टाइम पेशेंट डज नॉट ऑप फॉर द विजाइनल डिलीवरी और ड्यू टू कॉम्प्लिकेशन और सम अदर रीजन और सम अदर मेडिकल रीजन दे ऑप फॉर द सीजेरियन सेक्शन After cesarean section, certain imaging, certain uh, changes uh, may occur in the uterus, which you can easily pick on the ultrasound imaging. What are these changes? The first important changes are uh, there is there would be scar in the lower uterine segment, anterior wall, lower uterine segment. If you examine the patient uh, immediately, I mean within a few days after cesarean section you will be able to see highly echogenic scar with small fluid small gas area or sutures this would be immediate finding on the cesarean section uh, on the uterus that would be a scar tissues after our letter we cannot uh, say something for sure that how long will it last it may be for a weeks it may last for month or sometime we can still see hypertrophy of the scars in later life as well so, but anyhow in one way or the other if you have the history you must focus pay attention on the lower uterine segment you will be able to easily pick the uh, cesarean section scar after cesarean section what uh, is the important finding uh, for which we are doing ultrasound the one important thing is to look for bladder flap hematoma between the uterus and the urinary bladder if the hematoma develops that is called as a bladder flap hematoma which is quite common and you have to pay attention while you are scanning uh, it is uh, considered that this hem if this hematoma is less than 4 cm so there is no need for the intervention but if it is more than 4 cm so the management changes treatment changes and they may plan for the surgical procedures the second uh, complication is in case of upper area upper uterine segment so there would be another hematoma which is called as subfacial hematoma below the rectus abdominis sheet there will be development of the hematoma so this is another complication so you have to look for either uh, bladder flap hematoma or subfacial hematoma and you have to mention it uh, diagnose it on the ultrasound imaging and mention on the report because the plan of treatment changes for both because there would be separate procedure for the subfacial hematoma and there will be another procedure for the uh, bladder flap hematoma so these two are worth mentioning point your uh, ultrasound report should have all these information uh, on your report the second thing is uh, like uh, in later life uh, you can see these scar you can pick these scar on the ultrasound on the uterine lower body segment um, there may be some fluid within it because of any inflammation because of any uh, infection or there may be uh, some uh, other collection or hematoma within the scar so these are all the points Uh, which you have to uh, you must consider when you are scanning the patient so there will be something wrong with the endometrial uh, uh, with the with the c section scar how it will appear on the ultrasound imaging how we will uh, appreciate how the normal scar will look like on the ultrasound imaging uh, how hypertrophy will look like how uh, bladder flap hematoma will appear how you will distinguish between the bladder flap hematoma and the uh, subfacial hematoma these all informations are on the slides these uh, uh, further on coming slides so you must pay attention to these slides look for uh, for all these images how the pseudo mass will appear how the fluid uh, will be uh, within the endometrial uh, within the c section scar how the hematomas will appear so there are lot of information on these images so let's start watching these images Uh, this is a transvaginal sagittal scan of 3 weeks after cesarean delivery and it shows echogenic area in the lower uterine segment which you can appreciate here clearly indicated by the white arrow these are actually sutures so suture appears echogenic on the ultrasound imaging this patient has a cesarean delivery so after cesarean delivery suture was used and on the lower uterine segment 
you can appreciate these suture very clearly so do not confuse with other anomalies or other abnormalities these are post surgical sutures and usually these appears echogenic otherwise if you look clearly towards the endometrium and the other area of the uterus these are appears clear uh, cervical region is also clear there is no fluid in the cuddy sac no other abnormality can be seen there is no rpoc is left so overall this uh, transvaginal scan is quite clear the purpose of uh, this image uh, showing to you was to just uh, familiarize with the presence of uh, sutures in the lower uterine segment quite often clinician confused with the other abnormalities they might consider it as a calcified fibroid they might consider it as a foreign materials or something else sometimes some of the clinician might label this as a collection but these are actually sutures and post operative cesarean sutures so it will appear like this on the ultrasound imaging this is transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan you can clearly see uterus but on the anterior part of the uterus you can appreciate a well defined heterogeneous mass this h is indicating for the mass lesion this is actually hematoma and this type of a hematoma is called as bladder flap hematoma because this is in between the urinary bladder and the uterus so if occupied that space that would be considered as a bladder flap hematoma and it will appear like this so you should not confuse with the fibroid because most likely this appearance resembles as a fibroid but this is not fibroid this is bladder flap hematoma and the patient history will explain of this this patient had a cesarean section uh, three weeks ago and after three weeks she developed this hematoma uh, you know the development of hematoma it takes longer it's a gradual process so she reached up to that limit after three weeks patient wall was complaining about the pain and discomfort in the pelvic region and on the ultrasonography this uh, bladder flap hematoma was picked and as i mentioned if it is more than four centimeters so the surgical intervention will be required so pay attention the exact location where the location is so far the bladder flap hematoma is concerned it is between the urinary bladder and the uterus and on the ultrasonography it will appear anterior to the uterus so that's why it is quite easy to pick always look for the history and history will help you that it is not the fibroid rather it is hematoma uh, this transvaginal scan also shows a type of hematoma and this is called as subfacial hematoma it is another form of hematoma usually occurs after a post surgical especially post cesarean section in the previous image i have shown you uh, that was a, a bladder flap hematoma and this is subfacial hematoma usually there are two types of hematomas after surgery either it could be a subfacial hematoma or bladder flap hematoma the presence of these uh, both hematomas depends upon their sites one is between the urinary bladder and the uterus and the another is in the anterior abdominal wall just beneath the anterior rectus abdominis fascia so therefore the management changes you must be very careful while you are reporting especially the site so be clear for be uh, clear that you are writing the exact position of the hematoma because due to these hematoma the intervention and the surgical management would change for the bladder flap hematoma the incision would be given into the lower body lower part of the body while for uh, subsiding or removing the subfacial hematoma the incision would be on the different area so be careful while you are reporting and the another important thing is always mention the size if it is more than 4 cm so it will require surgical intervention and if it is less than 4 cm so usually it uh, might resolve with medication it has been remain a topic of uh, concern that how cesarean section uh, scar will look on the ultrasound imaging uh, most of the time in few ladies it will remain 
prominent and will be quite visible and you cannot easily miss on the ultrasound imaging while in other uh, ladies it might appear as a faint scar so it depends upon individual to individual and it depends upon the recovery status and also it depends upon the depositions of the fibrous tissues within it but in one way or the other you still will be able to see the c-section scar on the ultrasound especially in the lower uterine body the problem with caesarean section scar is it usually confused with the fibroid it quite often confused with the collection and it always confused with some ill-defined mess always take the history from the patient and look for the lower uterine segment in post section in post c section there will definitely be small scar which would be visible and you should not confuse just take the measurement and mention on your report as i mentioned earlier that sometime this cesarean section scar will look like a mass it will not be definitely mass it would it would be pseudo mass it would be called as a pseudo mass if you are still confused and you want to mention this and you want to clear your skin it is better to mention on the report that uh, ill-defined hypoequic area in the lower uterine body can be seen give its measurement and write down that it most probably be a pseudo mass or in other words you may also write in your differential that uh, keeping the patient history in view that patient has been already through c-section uh, delivery this may likely be a uh, caesarean section scar so these two uh, you can write in your differential you can at the same time write pseudomas and also may write down a c-section scar uh, if you have any doubt or if you have any confusion here on this image it is very clearly visible uh, indicated by both white arrows uh, although if you look at first glance it will look like a mass obviously but keeping the patient history in view you may think that this would be a caesarean section scar which look like a pseudomass this is another example of the pseudomass this is transvaginal scan and this p is scarred as a pseudomass this denote as a pseudomass indicated by the white arrow rest of the uterine area is clear uterine fundus is okay myometrium is fine but here particularly in some of the section and in the angulation you may find that this look like a mass it is actually nest not the mass it is pseudomass it appear as hypoequic many a time you might give it as a fibroid which is fine if you want to write in your differential that it could be a pseudomass it could be a c-section scar or it could be a ill-defined mass so further correlation with clinical histories and other laboratory investigation is suggested so all these points you must mention on your report because your report is the mm, important document uh, which explains whatever you have seen one in the another point mention worth mentioning here that on the transabdominal scan you cannot easily appreciate these uh, c-section scars or pseudomass you need to opt for the transvaginal scan on the transvaginal scan you can clarify everything and differentiate pseudomass and fibroid this transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan you can appreciate small fluid actually this fluid is uh, gravitated towards the caesarean section scar uh, indicated by the white arrow um, this could have been due to infection or maybe because of any exudative material but one another point is if in case of you're doing any procedure are you instilling any water within the uterine cavity for the endometrial polyp for or for any other diagnostic procedure so endometrial fluid may gravitate towards this caesarean section scar and it will look like this if you come across these findings you must always look for other clarification whether this is due to infection or patient is been through any other surgical procedure or diagnostic procedure so then you have to make your mind clear whether this fluid is due to any infective process or maybe because of any procedure 
yes friend uh, this was all about post cesarean section ultrasound uh, changes on the uterus so i'm sure there will be no more difficulty left i have clarified all the points you have seen the normal cesarean section scars you have seen the abnormal cesarean section scars you have seen all these hematoma i have also clarified if it is less than four centimeter hematoma so it needs some medicinal treatment or other investigation and if it is more than four centimeters so surgery would be the option and one another worth mentioning point a cesarean section scar may give rise to dysmenorrhea in later life it may give rise to pelvic pain in later life or sometime it may lead to infertility so one should keep all these points in view as a matter of complication so this point has been already clarified has been already discussed if related to this issue you uh, want to clarify something more or you have some question with you just drop me a text and i will get back to you with some other informative videos we'll see each other till then take great care of yourself bye bye